Hi friends, welcome back to Flatbird and Friends Tuesday. Today I'm reading chapter 5 of Flat Stanley, his original adventure. As always, we like to recap um, the beginning of the book. So chapter 1 is when Stanley became flat from a bulletin board because it fell on him. Chapter 2 um, was about him saving his mom's ring in the sewer, and then chapter three was him becoming a kite um, for his brother to fly, um, and his brother was actually a little jealous, so he tried to make himself flat, but this was Stanley's way making up to him. Chapter four, remember Stanley dressed as a shepherdess and caught the sneak thieves in the museum because they were stealing paintings. Um, and chapter five is called Arthur's Good Idea. All right, so let's see what this is all about. All right, Arthur's Good Idea, chapter five. For a while, Stanley Lambchop was a famous name. Everywhere that Stanley went, people started, stared, sorry, and pointed at him. He could hear them whisper, over there, Angus, over there, that must be Stanley Lambchop, the one who caught the sneak thieves, and things like that. But after a few weeks of the whispering and the staring stopped. People had other things to think about. Stanley did not mind. Being famous was fun, but enough was enough. And then came along a further change. And it was not a pleasant one. People began to laugh and make fun of him as he was passed by. Hello, super skinny, they would show, and even ruder things about the way he looked. Stanley told his parents how he felt. It's the other kids I mostly mind, he said. They don't like me anymore because I'm different. Flat. Shame on them, Mrs. Lambchop said. It is wrong to dislike people for their shapes, or their religion for that matter, or the color of their skin. Mrs. Lambchop is right. We don't make fun of people. We don't talk about them. It's not very nice. We accept everyone. I know, Stanley said. Only maybe it's impossible for everybody to like everybody. Perhaps, said Mrs. Lambchop, but they can try. Later that night, Arthur, Arthur Lambchop was awoken by the sound of crying. In the darkness, he crept across the room and knelt by Stanley's bed. Are you okay, he said. Go away, Stanley said. Don't be mad at me, Arthur said. You're still mad because I let you get tangled the day you were my kite, I guess. Skip it, will you, Stanley said. I'm not mad. Go away. Please, let's be friends. Arthur couldn't help crying a little, too. Oh, Stanley, he said, please tell me what's wrong. Stanley waited for a long time before he spoke. The thing is, he said, I'm just not happy anymore. I'm tired of being flat. I want to be a regular shape again, like other people. But I'll have to go on being flat forever. It makes me sick. Oh, Stanley, Arthur said. He dried his tears on a corner of Stanley's sheet and could think of nothing more to say. Don't talk about what I just, don't talk about what I just said, Stanley told him. I don't want the folks to worry. That would only make it worse. You're brave, Arthur said. You really are. You took hold of he took hold of Stanley's hand. The two brothers sat together in the darkness, being friends. They were both still sad, but each one felt a little better and then ha than he had before. And then suddenly, though he was not even trying to think, Arthur had an idea. He jumped up and turned on the light and ran to the big storage box where the toys and things were kept. He began to rummage in the box. Stanley sat up in bed to watch. Arthur flung a side of football and some lead soldiers and an airplane models and lots of wooden blocks. And then he said, aha, he found what he wanted, an old bicycle pump. He held it up and Stanley... And Stanley and he looked at each other. I wonder what he's going to do. Okay, Stanley said at last, but take it easy. Put the end of the long pump hose in his mouth and clamped his lips tightly about it so that no air could escape. I'll go slowly, Arthur said. If it hurts or anything, wiggle your hand at me. He began to pump, and at first nothing happened except that Stanley's cheeks bulged a bit. So they're taking the bicycle pump and putting it in Stanley's mouth, and I think we'll read more. He's trying to make him not flat anymore. So here's the picture. I'll show you that before I continue reading. Looks a little silly. Okay.
Let's see if it works. Arthur watched his hand, but there were no wiggle signal, so he pumped on, and then suddenly Stanley's top half began to swell. It's working, it's work working, sh Arthur pumping away. Stanley spread his arms so that he could get around inside him more easily. He got bigger and bigger. The buttons of the pajama, pajama top busted off. Pop, pop, pop. A moment more, and he was all rounded out. Head and body, arms and legs, but not his right foot. The foot stayed flat. Arthur stopped pumping. It's like trying to do the very last bit of those long balloons, he said. Maybe a snake would help. Stanley shook his right foot twice, and with a little whooshing sound, swelled out to match the left one. There stood Stanley Lampchop, as he used to be, as if he had never been flat at all. Oh, thank you, Arthur, Stanley said. Thank you very much. The brothers were shaking hands when Mr. Lamtrop strode into the room with Mrs. Lamtrop right behind him. We heard you, Mr. Lamtrop, up and talking when you ought to be sleeping, eh? Shame on you. George, said Mrs. Lamtrop, Stanley's round again. You're right, said Mr. Lamtrop, noticing. Good for you, Stanley. I'm the one who did it, Arthur said. I blew him up. Everyone was terribly excited and happy, of course. Mrs. Lamtrop made hot chocolate to celebrate the occasion. And several toasts were toasts were drunk to Arthur for his cleverness. When the party was over, Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop tucked the boys back into their beds and kissed them and turned out the light. Good night, they said. Good night, said Stanley and Arthur. It had been a long and tiring day. Very soon, the Lambchops were asleep. So this is that picture of them cheering because he's not flat anymore. And that is the end. So that is actually the end of the book. That was the last chapter. Um, so although I am not going to read anymore for now, we still will be having Flat Ferret and Friends Tuesday. So as always, keep sending in Flat Ferret or his friends. See, Flat Ferret is always by his friends. Um, and we will continue showing his adventure. So keep watching Tuesdays um see where flat fire and his friends take him bye guys thanks for letting me read to you hey guys so it's been a little rainy here and I've been a little bit bored so I was hoping that maybe flat ferret could help me think of something to do flat ferret oh hey flat ferret um are you willing to help me with something to do I can't even tell if that's a yes or a no. What do you think? Flat Ferret, is everything okay? Hmm. Why don't you whisper it into my ear? What's going on? Oh. Oh, no, I get that. Hmm. He's starting to feel a little sad because he felt like Maybe we should do something for Jess, since this was her last time reading to us this book. And she's done such a great job, and I totally agree. Yeah, now that's a yes. <laughs> All right, Flat Ferret, let's get to it. Hi friends, today Flat Ferret and I worked on some schoolwork. Um, he was cheering me on while I watched some videos. Um, he helped me take notes and was there just to encourage me. So that was what we did this morning. Hope to see what you guys did. Hey everyone, Alex here. I'm just getting ready to go on a road trip for Flat Ferret here. Uh, we're going to go visit my grandparents, who I haven't seen since quarantine. Uh, we're still going to be social distancing, all that stuff. Uh, just want to bring you guys along. You know, safety first, Ferret. There we go. Nice and nice and safe now. The House of Ferret Punch. Little roadside sing-along with our good friend over here. Ferret two, Ferret three. Some people use GPS. We use FPS, Ferret Positioning System. He's very good at reading signs. We're here. Grandpa's 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 here. Grand
grandma's house. Flat Bear, one of the best parts about a grandparent's house. The candy drawer. On the way back home from my grandparents, uh, Flat Bear and I are in a food coma from all the pizza my grandmother fed us. Uh, we kept social distancing up the whole time in the house. My mother and I also wore masks. Just want to make sure we keep everyone safe during this time. The Loch Ness Monster lives in this lake. Been there for over a hundred years. Made it home and day you and fall asleep. Flat Fair and I are back home. I just want to say that can be tough. I know not everyone can visit their uh, family and loved ones right now, but hopefully if we all just stay safe, uh, over time we'll be able to see each other again and I hope you all have a great day. Hola, Camp Arrowhead. Uh, today, I thought I'd take Ferret with me to Mexico to enjoy some tacos, some uh, chips and guac. Uh, we have some shrimp avocado tacos, the corn tortilla, and then uh, some homemade guacamole. Isn't that great? What do you think, Ferret? Should we try some? Muy bien. Mm -mm -mm. All right. We're going to enjoy this meal. See you later. Hasta luego. Flat Ferret just brought me a few items. Stickers, a pen, and some paper. Hmm. And is that my cell phone? Flat Ferret, what are you up to? Hi everybody! I'm so excited to show you Flat Ferret Freddy. His makeover is finally done. And I want to thank everybody that helped us, from the CSC to the Town Hall to Natick Recreation, and even here at my home with Alina and Leah. And along the way, Freddy made some friends. He made friends with Hubble the bunny, and Cirrus and Maddie the birds, which I think you can hear them chirping in the background and Callie, his best friend, the dog. Oh, I hope you like it. I know I do. Take a look. Flat Ferret decided to make just thank you cards. How sweet. And we used our cell phone to get a few friends involved. All right, Flat Ferret. So, what do you think? Do you feel better? Yay! Good, I'm so glad. And I bet Jess is going to love it. <laughs> You're so sweet making sure to think of her. We want you all to be excited too, because this just means we're going to have more time to hear from how everybody else is celebrating Flat Ferret and Friends. So don't forget, if you can't print out Flat Ferret, that's okay. Use one of your stuffed animals to use them as one of Flat Ferret's friends. And let us know what you guys have been up to. We miss you all. See you soon. Say bye.